This is the watch that Tudor should have made. I said what I said, but don't cancel me just yet. Let me explain. Okay, before anyone gets too wound up about what I just said about Tudor, a corporation that doesn't care whether you live or die as long as they get your money, I really do believe that this is the watch that Tudor should have made. I also believe this is the channel you should subscribe to, so can you do that too, please? Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's get into why I think this watch, the San Martin SN0121T, is my favourite San Martin so far. And just to be clear from the top, you won't have seen the paid promotion badge, and I haven't been sponsored, I haven't received the watch for free. This I bought with my own money, full price, just like anyone else would, before anyone accuses me of being a shill. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's crack on. So as will be obvious to anyone who knows what a watch is, this is San Martin's attempt to capitalise on the success of Tudor's Pelagos 39. Let's run through the specs before we get onto the good and the not so good. Like the Pelagos it hopes to emulate, it's 39mm in diameter. For me that's a universally good size for a diver. It's 12.7mm thick or thin, the lug to lug is a compact 47mm and the lug width is a nice even 20mm with the bracelet tapering from the female end link down to 16mm then back up to 18 and half millimeters at this on the fly adjustable clasp. The watch is made from grade 2 titanium and sized for my 6.5 inch wrist, it only weighs 96 grams. That weight is the first of many pros, in fact a lot of those dimensions I think are just in the pros column for me. But they, they could have just called this the San Martin Pro. Have Tudor done anything like that? I'm... You're under arrest for copyright infringement against Tudor! I, I only googled it. I'm just gonna call it the Pelagoose from now on. Pelagoose, good plural. I, I got sidetracked there. What other pros does this San Martin have uh, other than the pros on the San Martin legal team? Well, it's not originality. San Martin have basically taken the design of the full-size Pelagoose and shrunken it down, which isn't strictly what Tudor did when they made the Pelagoose 39. You see, San Martin have included that kind of sloped inner rehort with cutouts for each hour marker, as opposed to the real Pelagoose 39, which just has the applied markers sitting on a flat dial without those cutouts. On the San Martin, it makes the dial feel a bit more compact and it gives it some real depth. It makes it a bit more dynamic, I think. San Martin have also kept the matte bezel insert of the full-size Pelagoose and not that Sunray one that the Pelagoose 39 has. Other homage brands have decided to go the other way. You can see the C-Stern here, that's got the Sunray bezel insert. Now, I've tried both and just like my ex-girlfriend said, would always be the case. Matt is just better in every single way. You won, Matt, you crazy son of a bitch. The insert that San Martin have opted for just gives you the feeling of having a tool with you, which is something my ex-girlfriend will also understand all too well now that she's with Matt. You might not be able to dress it up as easily as that Sunray insert on the real 39. That's obviously got a bit of blinginess to it that the matte insert doesn't have. The 12.5mm height though, that means you can still get away with wearing this formally, like slipped under a shirt cuff with a suit and loafers, or casually when you're rocking your board shorts, flip flops and a vest. All of which sound like horrible outfits anyway, so. Wanna know what doesn't sound horrible? The bezel action. Take a listen. One hundred and twenty clicks, so that's sixty more than the Pelagoose. Double clicks, double the fun. Not really, but I mean, I prefer sixty clicks personally. But it's pretty good. I mean, have a listen again. It's nice, isn't it? So no, I like it. It's good, but the bezel's got a bit of bounce in it at seven o'clock, which is obviously frustrating because it is a really nice bezel action. Luckily, the alignment is pretty much bang on too, and it's fully loomed. Check it out. So it's BGW9, and there's a decent amount of it. I mean, it's San Martin, and their watches are known for being bright in the same way that your mum's known for not being bright, and they both live up to that reputation. The Grade 2 Titanium also lives up to its reputation as a bit of a scratch magnet, as you can see from the various scuffs and marks on the bracelet, and even the back of the case. It doesn't make the watch seem any less well finished from a distance or anything, it's only when you really concentrate and find in those scratches, if you know what I mean. The chamfered edges of the case are beautifully defined, as is the polished area on the top side of the crown guards. 
as I said earlier, I've also tried out the Seastern Pelagos 39 Homage, and that just doesn't have the pizzazz of this San Martin, and the finishing is definitely a part of that. This just has a little bit of sheen to it that the Seastern doesn't. Being titanium, I was worried that I might not be able to try out other straps with this, but here it is on an Artem sailcloth strap, and I think it looks solid. If you're into your straps, this will work on them. If you stick to the bracelet, which I've tended to do in the past, this is really well finished. There isn't any sharpness to the titanium, which had been an issue on steel San Martins that I've been reviewing, but the transitions here are nice, the polishing is clean, this is smooth all the way around. That includes the crown, the action of which helps make this feel a cut above what its price tag would suggest. There are some titanium watches that I've had, I'm thinking of the Zelo Swordfish that I had, and even the Seastone Pelagoose that I've shown a few times here. There was a grittiness to those crowns. The price on this at time of recording is about £230 or $280. That also includes a three year warranty. That's rare for micro brand watches, let alone AliExpress brands. San Martin don't typically do massive discounts on their watches during the AliExpress sale, but it is always worth checking because they'll probably have stuff like coupons and tokens and stuff like that that you can use to get a bit knocked off the price. I could have waited for the sale, but I didn't. And to be honest, I don't regret that one bit. If you do want to pick one of these up once I've gone through the cons and you want to help support the channel there will be an affiliate link in the description below to where I picked this up. Now as your mum said upon beginning her prison sex tour of 2012 let's see what cons we're dealing with today. Although I've said this is the watch that Tudor should have made it's unmistakably a San Martin. Why? Well, oh, you know, the logo, the crappy Pelicase box, and the fact I paid roughly 200 quid. I mean, they're dead giveaways. But also this on-the-fly adjustable clasp. It's great, do not get me wrong. I love it. It makes adjusting the bracelet on the fly a breeze, but it's also the length of a double-decker bus. There are five positions to choose from for maximum flexibility and comfort. Five positions, maximum flexibility and comfort. There's a mum joke somewhere. I'm not going to make it. It's too easy. Like your mum. No, I'll leave, I'll leave a space here. You can insert your own. Oh, so yeah, the clasp works really well, but please, San, if you're watching, make this clasp shorter and maybe a bit less bulky because it dominates my average six and a half inch wrist. And while we're on requests, another con is the AR coating or lack thereof. San Martin claim there is some AR, but my mate Paul claims his cousin knows Beyonce. You just look at both of them and you know it can't be true. There is some AR on this because you can sort of see the blue tinge to it, but the flecto on the crystal is ridiculous at times. There might be a layer or two of AR coating, but it's as good as it not being there for me. Please, a little bit more. Also, have a look at the crystal closely just to the left of the six o'clock marker. There seem to be like tiny micro scratches on it or something. It's a sapphire crystal and I've tried sort of buffing these out and what have you, but nothing's worked. They're not visible unless under macro or if you're really squinting and you're in the right light, but it's a QC issue that I wouldn't expect from San and the guys. And the movement choice is okay, it's a Seiko NH35, but this is my second watch from San Martin with a movement that has pretty loose tolerances. To be clear, the Seiko NH35 movement is running within those tolerances. That's minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. Usually, however, San Martin regulate the movements and get them running extremely well. In this case though, the minus 11 seconds per day seems to suggest that this has come straight from Seiko into the case of the watch, then onto my wrist. Of course, it also has a ghost date position given this is the NH35 and that this is a no date dial. You can still get it with a date complication, but I think the no date has a much cleaner look. I do think the brand could have been a bit more adventurous with this movement though. I'd honestly buy one of these with a Swiss movement in the back if they offered it. That's how good I think it is. And maybe they could have shaved a millimeter off this case height too, but alas, no. Another watch, another NH35. But that's about it, a couple of QC issues, namely those little scratches and the bounce in the bezel. And then there's the long, but still very good on the fly adjustable class. And then the accuracy or lack thereof of the movements. Those are the pros and the cons. So let's quickly run through the final score. Not an original design, but taking an existing design and shrinking it down is something that Tudor decided against for some reason. I wish they hadn't because I honestly would have paid several thousands of pounds for something like this from Tudor. Can't fault the Swiss giant's choice for their movement, but San Martin's is plainly average. The price though, even outside of a sale, is hard to argue with. I'm giving a bonus point for that three year warranty and the fact that this feels a hell of a lot more than it costs. The bezel and crystal means we lose at least a point, but this is easily 
one of my most comfortable watches, thanks in part to its titanium construction and on-the-fly adjustable clasp. It looks cool, and it's another piece of watch magic from Sam Martin. It gets a stellar 9 out of 10. Let me know what you think of the watch and of the score in the comments below. If you want to pick one of these up, either in the sale or out of it, there will be an affiliate link in the description below. You won't pay any more for the watch, but I'll get a small commission, which will really help support the channel. And we're well on our way to 6,000 subscribers. When we get there, I'm going to be giving away the Loom Pip custom watch to one of you guys. If you want to be in with a chance, you've got to be a subscriber, so hit that subscribe button now. Give the video a like if you liked it, and hit the bell to be notified every time I upload, which, you know, once or twice a week, maybe. I hate notifications, but YouTube loves them, so if you can do me that favour, I'd really appreciate it. If you got this far, or you didn't and you can't hear me right now, either way, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.